Paramount Pictures is currently filming a major motion picture in North Georgia called Very Interesting Things, which you'll see once you check out that movie. We generally work on a few different types of projects. Obviously, we do a lot of short films. Michael, how did you get started in filmmaking? It's um, a very large part of the success of any project. Um, and I started my filmmaking career actually on a cruise ship, making short films. Wow. I'm the executive producer to our new feature film, um, The Calm Denominator. Tell us a little bit about your character in the film. She's really upset um, from the beginning, from the get-go. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Well, basically, I, um, I somehow started acting in uh, 1992. back to 1994 um, with your first feature film, Chocolate City. Um, how'd that come about? How'd you get involved? How'd it break it down for us? Well, basically, um, Chocolate City was a film that we did at Florida a and Myself, my business partner, Will Packer. We're both uh, alums of FAM. And it actually started in 1993. And uh, I wanted to be a filmmaker, had done some things in high school. And I saw Menace of Society. Mm -hmm. And I was really blown away by the movie. And a couple of my friends said, well, hey, Rob, since you did the film in high school, why don't you try to make something around fam? So I spent that summer. I was actually in D.C., in your old <laughs> neck of the woods. <laughs> and, um, and so I was in D.C. for the summer and wrote the script for Project Chocolate City. And that was about uh, life at Historically Black College. I had never seen a film camera before. I didn't know how to use that technology. Wow. So Florida State University had a film program. So I went over there, got with some of the students, said, hey, you guys run the camera, you guys do, the do all the technical stuff, and we'll do the creative. I'll write and direct, and um, we'll make it over fam. So we raised the money, we raised about $8,000 from student government. We, got, like, we formed an on-campus organization called FAMU Cinema. We got money from student government, from the Panhale Council, and uh, from you know our fraternity and we're alphas. Shout out to the, to, to, to the boys in black and gold, you know. And uh, we shot the movie in '94. We had a big casting call, and we shot it over a month, mostly on weekends and school nights. Wow. And um, the movie was finished. We cut a little soundtrack. We put it out locally in theaters in Tallahassee. And when we looked up, we had a bag full of money. And we said, hey, you know what? We actually got paid to do this, so there's no way that we're going back to, you know, regular jobs when we graduate. We're going to go be exactly, we're going to be filmmakers. Now, you mentioned before that you and Will had formed Rainforest Films, and you decided to relocate here to Atlanta instead of L.A. Now, why wouldn't you move to the mecca of filmmaking in L.A. and instead stay here in Atlanta? When we were, when we were about to graduate, we were trying to figure out where we were going to go with Rainforest. Um, we thought about L.A. and we thought about New York, but they were both really expensive and they're saturated. Everybody wants to be a filmmaker. Everybody wants to do what we were trying to do. So we thought about Chicago, D.C., and Atlanta because those were all places that had growing film communities. D.C. had BET. Chicago was big for film. But Atlanta had music videos, right. documentaries, and it was cheap. Like the cost of living here, all three of those was the best. It was close to Tallahassee, so we figured, hey, let's go to Atlanta and we'll do music videos or whatever we can to get into business. And so it was Atlanta or bus 12 years ago, and, and we're still here. Wow. Now, from Chocolate City to your film, Twa, one of my favorites, because you really pushed the envelope. You really, really did. How was that? How was that experience? That was a huge film. That was a, that was a huge undertaking for us. Twa was something that was kind of for us born out of desperation. We had been here in Atlanta for two and a half years. We were pretty much starving artists. And, you know, it wasn't making sense financially for us. So we were trying to come, with, come up with a project that we could do that we could actually shoot in our house. So the idea was, let's come up with something that we could film. We were living in Jonesboro at the time. Figured, okay, we're going to raise $30,000. And uh, we brought in another guy, Greg Anderson, that went to school with us. So the idea was we'll raise 10000 apiece um, and shoot this movie on mini-DV. So the idea was born out of a, out of a barbershop conversation. 
So we were thinking, wow, wouldn't it be cool to do a fatal attraction type movie with people of color? But we'll you know, frame it in the mind state of a menage a trois and what would make the average couple want to do it. Not the, not the couple that's into that, <coughs> excuse me, not the couple that's into that, but the, actually the couple where it's the average couple and you would expect that they would just be monogamous or not. And so... That's why everyone loved it, because everyone could relate. Everyone could relate to it. Exactly. Yeah. That's, and and that, that, was, that's, that was our goal for that project. So it started off as a $30,000 mini DV movie, and it grew and grew and grew into about a $100,000 movie on film where we actually got some talent from L.A., Gary Dorton and Kenya Moore and people like that, Bryce Wilson. And so for us, we shot the movie. It was a huge undertaking for us because this was the first time that we ever got a chance to, to use video assist. When we did Twa and all our other projects, we never knew what the stuff looked like. It was all trusting the DP because we didn't have video assist. We never had an AD before, an assistant director to help with scheduling. There's so many things that we just never had. So how did you get through that transition? How, you know, God's prayer and God, how? You, you know, for us, it was hooking up with some of the people that had been doing film in this market for a while and uh, com combining our, our approach with their knowledge and piecing some things together. Um, growing a lot more story-wise as a writer, growing a lot more performance-wise as a director, but still not knowing as much. And then shooting that movie, and it was done, and nothing happened. It didn't get picked up by the studios like we thought. We didn't get the big deal. So we wound up taking that movie around to film festivals, and we got, mo we got money to put it out in theaters ourselves. And uh, it made some money for us. Right. Now, after that project, didn't you um, uh, work with Sony? Didn't they offer you a deal or, or something like that? Yeah, what happened is that we finished Twa, took it to all the studios, and everybody said no. Then we got some money to put it out in theaters. We got together with Bernard Bronner and a group of other investors that helped us you know, raise the, the money to put it out in theaters. Made about a million dollars. And then studios like Sony began to call. Because once it came out in the trades that this little company, Rainforest Films, made a million dollars on this movie that they had never heard of, they said, hey, that could be a big video hit. So we got into a home video situation with Sony. And then um, they came back and they said, so what do you guys have next? So we all fly out to LA. We had these big ideas and everything. And they said, well, now what about a twat suit? And uh, not really what I wanted to do creatively. <laughs> but you know, I needed to pay the bills. So we did. Pandora's box as a standalone feature. And that was the first time that we did a movie that the studio paid for. So Sony financed. Sony financed Pandora's box, which we released in uh, film festivals. It did really well for us there. We put it out in movie theaters and it made another million dollars for them. And that started our, our career. For them. For them. <laughs> it started our career over at Sony. Wow. Yeah. We, them, do you still have we, that, have we still work with Sony. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Um, let's talk about the gospel. Sure. You went from that wonderful experience with Twa and Pandora's Box. Now, the gospel. You directed that. How does one? I mean, your story is really, really wonderful. But it's still almost as if the gospel. That was huge. The cast sure. was huge. How? How did that feel? I mean, you got. Uh, serious recognition for that. It was nominated um, for uh, at the Black Movie Awards in 2006 for um, Best Screenplay, was it? How, how was that? Tell me about it. It was, uh, you know, doing the gospel was a great experience. What happened was that after Pandora's Box, um, all the movies that Sony wanted us to do were all erotic thrillers. Because in their mind, it was, hey, this is working. It's making money. That's what you guys do. Let's not reinvent ourselves. But as a creative person, as a director, it was a little stifling. Mm -hmm. So Will and I began to produce together. We started working with other directors, Craig Ross and Sylvain White, um, people like that. So the gospel gave me the opportunity to direct something else that was completely non-erotic, non-sexual, and um, I, I couldn't wait for the challenge. So it was- Were you scared? You know, I, I think, I think, I Be think real. Anytime, anytime you're about to, you got to direct something, you're a little scared. If, if you're not, then something's wrong. I think every day that you go to the set as a director, you're nervous. 
because it, it's, it's, you're excited about it, but it's like, man, what if, what if it doesn't work today? <laughs> you know? Um, but I couldn't wait for the opportunity. It was uh, so much fun to do, and it gave me the chance to really do something different. And the gospel was the film that allowed Rainforest to transition. See, we were the independent guys who then did Twa, which got us noticed by the studios. Then we did Pandora's Box, which got us into the studio system, but we were still doing smaller movies, mainly for DVD, like right. Motives and things like that. Gospel, I liked Motives. You liked that one? Yeah, Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> Gospel was the first time we did a movie that the studio paid for and released in theaters. And so then when it made money, then they said, you know what, you guys can be theatrical guys. So that transitioned us. That's huge. Oh, it was big. It, it, so we weren't just the lower budget guys. We became the theatrical guys, and that, you know, that led to Stomp the Yard and so on and so forth. As you could tell by your cast, how things grow from the C-list to the B-list, you know? Listen, listen, I love it, you know? So it was, it was, it was a huge transition for us. And, um, you know, that film was, was a big part of that. Let's talk about Stomp the Yard. Sure. You mentioned that. Um, fun movie, extremely. Obviously, um, influenced by your Pan-Hellenic uh, experience. <laughs> experience. Yeah. So tell us about that. Uh, Stump the Yard was full circle for us. That movie got made 10 years after we had been in Atlanta. The first movie we made, Chocolate City, was about life at a historically black college. That's what started Rainforest Films. At the 10 year mark, here we are doing Stump the Yard about life at a historically black college, and we're shooting it on Morris Brown's campus in HBCU. And, you know, Will and I were fraternity guys. And so we, we lived that and experienced that. So to be able to do that and to frame it in a way to where we were able to cast a light, a positive light on fraternities and the art of stepping and black colleges, um, but make it something that young people would think is cool, was cool for us. And they still do to this day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and go to the Mecca, well, LA, know, or what? Been, uh, we've been bi-coastal, you know. I like that word. <laughs> yeah, bi bi-coastal is a good thing. Uh -huh. We would, you know, the plan is to stay in Atlanta. Um, the work has been in LA. Last year, we shot a film this Christmas in LA. Uh, my partner, Will, is shooting a movie now in LA, Obsessed. And I just directed an episode of ER in LA. And I'll, Ooh, wow. and I'll be doing more television stuff in LA. So the work is there, but we're developing more projects to bring to Atlanta. So we have- Because there's still a really good oh, yeah. acting pool here, oh, yeah. you know, and the community, they really complain, <laughs> you know, what about us picketing what, you know, so they are here, but I, I commend you. I commend you for all the work that you've brought here. Um, what else are you guys uh, working on in, in the future besides all the wonderful things that you just mentioned in LA. Anything that, anything else that you can tell us? Well, you know, we um, have a few things brewing right now. We have a movie that we're going to do in LA called Bone Deep, which is an action movie um, with uh, T.I. and Matt Dillon and Idris Elba. Whoa. And uh, then there is a A list all up in there. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> and, then, and then there's a movie that we're going to do. It's kind of like an urban version of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and it's called um, Operation Prom Night. And we're gonna do that one here. In Atlanta. In Atlanta. So we're probably- When's the casting call? <laughs> you know, I have to let you have this, you have to stay on that one, you know. So um, then we'll probably do that, you know, first part of next year. And then there's some um, TV opportunities that we have as far as launching, launching a couple of shows. So uh, we're, you know, in heavy development to get that stuff off the ground right now. Um, how does it feel? It feels great. It feels it feels like a like a a true blessing to be able to make films. You know, it's interesting because you spend so long trying to break in, and then once you're in, you spend just as long trying to keep the momentum going. Mm -hmm. And then when the mo when when the momentum goes, everything's a blur because you're working. You're going from this to this to this, so you're just trying to find some time. So. It's, it's trying to manage the ride and enjoy the whole ride and enjoy the, 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 the peaks and the valleys. Because when you're in the valleys, it's not as much work. 
but you get more time for this and more time for friends and family. When you have the peaks, you try to just enjoy the work and just say, man, you know, we're doing this and we're, doing, we're having fun, you know. Um, and then you look forward to that time off. And when you're off, you look forward to that time back to work. So, wow. yeah. Rob, what's the largest uh, budget? <laughs> that sounds weird. That you've worked with? Largest budget that we've worked with today, right now, the obsessed budget is 23 million dollars. Define that uh, obsessed budget. Uh, the, the, the movie Obsessed is happening right now that my partner Will is doing is a 23 million dollar studio project. Before that the biggest budget that we done was Stomp the Yard which was 13 million dollars. So it's about 10 million dollars more. Um, so it's a lot bigger than let's say the gospel which is about four and a half to five and then Twa which was about 180,000 and Chocolate City was about eight thousand wow. dollars. Yeah, so they got increasingly bigger over the years. Congratulations, congratulations! And Rural Hollywood thanks you so much for blessing us, really, with your presence. This was been long, long, a long time coming and awaiting and all that. So thank you, really. Well, well I appreciate you guys having me um, because you know it's because of the support of shows like this that really help us and give us the opportunity to kind of go forward and do what it is that we do. And, you know, we tell everybody that because it's, we get inspiration from you all. And if you all don't respond to the stuff that we do, then we're not making films unless we're just doing it and showing it in our houses, you know. So this is, uh, this means a lot. Wow. Rob Hardy.